Welcome back to the PNR Communications YouTube channel. My name is Don Humphrey and I'm a technician with PNR Communications. And as promised, I am going to talk some more about the R7. Uh, I'm excited. The R7, I've been playing with it now. It's, it's a great radio. Um, but what I wanted to do with this video is just kind of show you a presentation I put together that kind of details all the features um, and what Motorola has done to make this the best Moto Turbo radio that has been along uh, in the entire history of Moto Turbo. So without further ado, let's get to that presentation. So here's a look at the R7. So it does come in two different um, flavors. We have a full display model um, here on the right, obviously, with that large, beautiful screen. Um, it also does come in a non-display model. So we do have a lot of um, a lot of customers uh, that uh, that that love the Moto Turbo line, but have people who work in environments where this display uh, causes them more problems than not. So they like the non-display for people who do not need that information uh, right in front of them. So we do also offer a non-display model of the R7. So two really good looking radios and great sounding radios, I've got to say. So big features, compact design. That's the whole theme of the R7. Uh, it comes with a 2.4 QVGA, a 2.4 inch QVGA display. Um, it does have the front and back microphones. We talked about that in the last video. That does give us some advanced noise canceling in the radio. The forward facing speaker that's below the keypad um, delivers beautiful audio. It's a wide band speaker. It's got great frequency response. Uh, it sounds better than any other Moto Turbo radio that has come along. Uh, it just, it, it sounds incredible. Um, it expands on the Wi-Fi support. So the 7550E only supported the 2.4 gigahertz band of Wi-Fi. Um, the R7 will also support 5 gig. Um, so if you are a 5 gig uh, Wi-Fi only uh, agency, uh, or company, then we can support that now. And we also have the latest Bluetooth 5.2 um, protocol for your Bluetooth uh, needs. Uh, the battery, uh, we talked about the battery. It's a, it's a slim design, makes the overall profile of the radio smaller, and the emergency button a little better ergonomically placed and a little bit larger um, than what came on previous generations. So what systems will this R7 work on? Well, it'll work on direct, which my last video, we, we demonstrated direct where we can just talk back and forth radio to radio. It will do conventional, whether that's digital or analog. It will do IP site connect. Um, so if you have multiple sites, um, IP site connect works. It will work in capacity plus, whether that be single site or multi-site capacity capacity plus and since it is a fully dmr tier 3 compat or compliant radio it will work on the capacity max uh, platform as well and capacity max is our highest level um, trunking system uh, whether that be single site or multi-site uh, for the moto turbo platform so one thing that you'll notice is missing from this um, and, and some customers still have Connect Plus systems out there. The Connect Plus system is not supported on the R7. So Connect Plus is currently a dead product, so it is no longer being supported. Um, it, is, it is past its days uh, in the Motorola portfolio. Uh, Connect Plus was replaced by Capacity Max. And being forward-looking, uh, since we've put Connect Plus to bed, um, Connect Plus is not included in an R7. So keep that in mind as you migrate your radio fleets forward uh, for moving up to the next generation of trunking system, which would be Capacity Max. So here's a look at our keypad. And as I pointed out, when we looked at the actual radio, we can see that speaker grill. 
uh, positioned right below that keypad. Loud, clear audio. Um, I love it. I mean, trust me, Moto, Moto Turbo has gone through some audio hurdles over the years when the 6550 came out. Um, if you didn't really play with and tweak the, the audio settings, you sounded like a, a drunken duck in a metal uh, outhouse when you talked. <laughs> so uh, it, you could tweak it and you could get it to where it sounded a lot better. And then Motorola started coming along with uh, frequent firmware updates. And every time we get a new firmware upgrade, we seem to get better and better audio. Um, and until we got into the 7000 series where I thought the audio was, was quite quite good but the r7 has even gone above and beyond uh from where the 7000 series uh audio is this is just a quick look at the front uh display of what you're going to see on the radio um so you have this top widget here that has your zone your channel and then right in this white space below the channel that's where your group call id or group call alias will show up as well as the alias of a calling radio or the id number of the calling radio you've got your call and messaging widget right below here so if you've missed a uh, an attempt at a private call or a call alert it will uh, show up in this widget right here um, check this out right here date and time now, I know a lot of you may be skeptical because you've never seen a, a Motorola radio that's kept ever kept time, period. Uh, some of them have had clocks on them. And I don't know, when I was a cop and I had an HT1250 that had a clock on it, I, that thing would lose four minutes a day, guaranteed. Uh, so it wouldn't even be worth setting. But with the R7, it is a real-time clock. So it is referencing an actual external time source, whether that be through your Wi-Fi network or whether that is through GPS, it is going to reference a real time reference. So that clock is going to stay updated and I'm excited about that. I don't know why I'm so excited about that, but that was one thing that irked me back when, when I was a police officer that my radio didn't keep good time. Now, granted, I was upset about that, but I would never pull my radio out just to see what time it was. That's what watches were for back in the days before you had your cell phone and smartwatch and all that stuff. Um, but it was just, it, I, it was a pet peeve. You know, if you're going to put a clock on something, make sure it's correct all the time. R7, real-time clock, we've got it now. And on the left side of the screen here, now I, I'll get off my soapbox um, just a few of the icons that you may see, um, your status messages, call alerts, missed calls, texts, job tickets, and emergency notifications. So noise suppressor. So those two microphones on the radio, those are what gives us an improved noise suppressor on the R7 radio. So by using those two microphones, I can have one microphone sampling the ambient noise around me while the, the forward-facing microphone pointed towards my mouth is going to hear my voice and it's easier to filter out the stuff that I don't want to listen to when I'm transmitting over the air. Um, we do have three different settings for that. Disabled, which means all the noise suppression is off. Basic, which is only when you're in an extremely high noise environment or enhanced auto, which is suited for just general day-to-day -day usage. I've said some things about audio. Audio on this radio is spectacular. Um, it is louder than the XPR 7000 series. By tweaking the settings in the um, CPS, uh, the programming software, um, we can get that audio. Um, and it lists things here as like uh, 102 phone well, a phone is just an, a, a unit of perceived loudness, um, but 102 phone is higher than what the XPR 7000 series portable ever had. Um, and then if you boost it in the user profile up to lever, level three, um, you can get even above that 102. But the, the message here is that we can boost the audio 
on an R7 so much louder than what we could on an XPR 7000 series portable. And that right there is a game changer because some people complained that they could never get the XPR 7000 series loud enough for their use. Um, those people that worked in very loud environments. So R7, Motorola has heard your complaints. They've, they've heard uh, your suggestions. They've taken those into account. They've applied them in this radio. Bluetooth, um, we can do serial port profiles. So if you have a, uh, a, an application to where you would like to do barcode scanning through the radio system, you can do that. Um, handset profile for headsets and other audio accessories. Um, personal area network profile, um, which can be used for programming over Bluetooth. Uh, the generic attribute profile, um, which is our Bluetooth low energy profile. Um, currently, I don't have the application uh, and all the information about it right now, but they do have a partnership or at least some type of relationship with Honeywell gas sensors um, that you could have like a four gas monitor or I do a lot of work at refineries. So we have to wear an H2S monitor on us at all times when we're in the uh, refinery. You could have that to where if the monitor measures a dangerous level of gas, it can automatically send an emergency alert through the radio system so that you can let somebody know immediately without having to do any interaction with the radio that, Hey, somebody has detected a dangerous level of a gas out in the refinery. Um, and then you can have certain accessories that can connect, um, dual mode. So you can have one that collects connects in kind of a classic Bluetooth and then another that connects in Bluetooth low energy as this portfolio kind of expands and we get more accessories, we'll get more information on that types of Wi-Fi that we support. Um, we support WPA three, which is a new security type. We never had that in the 7,000 series portable. Um, it's an enhancement over, over the WPA two. Um, so we can do this in three, you know, in, in either enhanced open, which, uh, for those of you network folks out there, there's no need for a password or a certificate to do enhanced open. Um, WPA3 personal, which is just a password that's required. WPA3 enterprise, which is a certificate based authentication on Wi Fi, um, is also available. Now, everything up until that WPA3 can be um, done just programming in CPS. If you want to enable WPA3 Enterprise, you have to use radio management in order to do that because that's where your certificate is going to be stored. So time and date, we've talked about this. I've already got my soapbox on this. We're going to have a radio that actually tells the right time and I'm excited. Uh, another thing that I'm excited about is audio recording and playback. Um, so you can record the last five calls that your radio has received. Each one of those calls can be up to two minutes long. So total time that you can record is 10 minutes. Now, the only caveat with this is that regardless of how long the call is, you're only recording five calls. So if you have five three second calls, then you're only recording 15 seconds in that instance. If you have five one minute calls, then you're recording five minutes, but you can do five two minute calls, but it's only going to keep those, um, those last five recordings and cycling the power of the radio off and on. You're still going to have the last five calls that your radio received. They are going to be in that radio. We talked a little bit about this one time activation process. Um, I fast forwarded through the activation process just so we didn't have, uh, I, I don't, I can't remember how long it was in the last video, but it was a long time waiting for this process to go through, um, and to get that activation. All right. Well, there you have it. There are the features of the new R7 Motorola, uh, Moto Turbo radio, um, and in the next video about the R7, and trust me, I promise we'll get back to those tech tips uh, that I know you guys tune in for. 
uh, about how to use the radios that you already have. But we'll get back to those when I'm done playing with my new toy. I am so excited about this radio, the features of this radio, but I'll demonstrate some of those features that we just talked about in the next video. And hopefully you guys are as excited about this radio as I am. But until next time, my name is Don Humphrey with PNR Communications. Don't forget to like and subscribe below. Don't forget to tell your friends, your family to tune in to our YouTube channel. And if you have any questions whatsoever, recommendations about future videos, please feel free to leave a comment and let us know how we're doing. Thanks again and have a great day.